I'm going to try and demonstrate to you some of the settings that bones have. To do that I'm just going to create a simple tube and then apply a bone to form and then add a couple bones to this. Uh, from the top view I'm going to slide the first bone over to the left and the second bone over to the right. So that's that's what this scene is set up like just to show you how it's working. Um, what I'm also going to do is set the tube's draw mode to wait so that you can see the influence that the bones are having over the geometry. Unfortunately it's not real time so what you have to do is keep toggling back and forth between another tab and the setup tab to, to see its influence. And so here when I click on animate you can see the influence this bone has over the geometry. So if we click on this bone and then go to setup you can see and then back to animate you can see the influence this bone has on the geometry. So as as you can see it's more inte it's intelligently uh, reaching out based on the position of the bone and it's reaching out and having influence over the geometry. So when we do anything to this bone it's grabbing out to a certain point and then it has a fall off. So anything we do to that bone uh, is influencing that geometry. So moving everything like that. So what we want to do is demonstrate some of the control you have over that influence, that gradient from one bone to the next. Um, one of the first things that you adjust uh, intuitively obviously is the length. Um, by default you d the length doesn't control anything about the way it grabs geometry. So if I make this one really long and this one really short oops, um, it doesn't do anything. It still has the same uh, influence over the geometry. So that's that's by default that's how that works. But if you were to change this L length factor, the multiplier of influence over the length, um, if I were to change this to say 0.5, now it's going to have a stronger influence over that bone. So uh, over the geometry. So if I go to animate and you can see that it, it changed its influence and so it's now it's a harder grab and uh, the bigger I make this bone um, I make it really big the, the more it's going to grab this. See how it grew? So and and that multiplier here you can change that multiplier say one and then it'll have an even stronger influence but you can also set it to negative 0.5 and it'll have a lot less influence based on the scale so the and because it's a negative and it's kind of mind screwing thing but because it's a negative the smaller I make this bone the more influence it will have so that's a multiplier based on the length the length factor multiplier Normally you just leave that to one. So let's put these back to their default. Oops. What did I do? Oh, zero. One. Let's put them back to their default of one. And play with some other settings. The next row here is limited range. And what you can do with this bone is you can change its range limit uh, based on a, a visual representation of how much it's grabbing. This is very similar to how 3D Studio Max does it actually. So you can change that range so it's really, really small. And then on this bone you can do the same thing. You turn limited range and then turn it so it's really, really small. Um, you can see that now it's there's a kind of a hard cutoff. Um, this stuff isn't being influenced by anything so the computer doesn't know what to do with it so it just snaps it all into world zero. Uh, that's uh, c kind of a, a more traditional 
approach to uh, envelopes and and the way that bones influence geometry uh it's not normally something anything that most you know, traditional maasai animators play with but that that feature is there and that demonstrates how that works um you know if i make this range a lot more so that it overlaps with this ones you can see um usually <laughs> more easily see how its influence has changed so let's make that more obvious really big so you can see that its its influence is bigger and it has more influence over over the the range of distance that it can grab has more influence over than what this one does but again that's not something uh, I, I guess I shouldn't poo poo it maybe someone will find a great use for it but Usually it's not something that Messiah riggers play with all that much. They usually leave it to their default. Um, another thing that you can play with is the fall off. And what the fall off does is if you increase that, let's make that twice as big, let's make it 30 actually really strong. What that does, and um, let's make this one's fall off one. Uh, let's see. Let's make it some. Let's find a two. Let's find something that. Yeah, there we go. So this fall off is really, really strong. Um, you get lots and lots of influence over the geometry, but this bones fall off is really low, so you have less influence over the geometry. And you can easily reverse that just by you know thirty here and two here and you've just reversed it so that this bone only has a tiny fall off and but this one has a great big fall off and it's grabbing all the geometry so that's what that one does um, a use for this um, something that is very useful is if you were to have a bone um, let me set this to 90 oops negative 90 no 90 and then change it so that it's length let's split that bone in half uh, why am I seeing that ah, split bone so now it's two bones there uh, back to the default 8 range of 1 even though we don't have that on it's just defaulted out so you can see uh, you can see that this bone by default has a kind of a soft uh, blend to the next and so you get this kind of squished sausage look um, but what if you were to change the bones fall off to something greater let's do 20 on each one when you rotate you get this it looks different now because the fall off the range of influences is increased and so you get a more natural pinch uh, something that would be better for elbows so that's what that setting does um, slip what slip does is any value you put in here is kind of a uh, it grabs it less so it'll it won't grab it as much so a slip of one and this bone is no longer influencing any geometry and that's actually very very useful for riggers who want the you know the benefit of a bone you know bone within an IK chain and then, and you can parent things to it but you don't want it to actually grab any geometry and so that's a, a very very helpful uh, setting to put on bones to have a slip of one but sometimes it's very useful to have it be a very very minor thing so the bone will be moving around a lot but you want it to just kind of wiggle the geometry underneath it a little bit um, and so you what you do is you put some very low settings on there so point one and now uh, as it slips it'll have less influence uh, a, a setting of let's say one uh, point eight will oops still not enough I think it's because the fall off so strong on this other one let's put it back to its default eight 
eight. And let's put this to point two. And you see the bigger I make it, um, the more it just doesn't influence the geometry anymore. And the more this one has an influence. Uh, it it kind of it abhors a vacuum. It always fills a vacuum. So uh, geometry will always be influenced by something. And so uh, if you've put this slip low, then this bone will grab more. Um, it, it feels odd. It seems odd logically, but uh, it, it it does become very intuitive uh, if you just leave things at its default. But that's what that slip does. A line to z, line z to parent length is one of these odd settings that I'm sure someone will find a use for it. I have never uh, really understood it. Um, if I let me try and understand it. Um, demonstrate it. If I change this length here you can see that the bones um, uh, this one's position is at the very tip there because it's set to 1 but if I set this to uh, 0.2 and then change the length uh, maybe it's this one if I set it to 0.2 there we go so its position is 20% along this bone. So when I change this length, um, it's it's a multiplier of two based on its position along the length of this bone. Uh, it's not something I really really comprehend to be honest. Uh, I usually just leave it at one, and when I change the length. Uh, you can look at the length of the bone. If you've ever messed it up, you can look at the length of the bone, the length, and you can just copy and paste that value in to the Z position of the second bone, and it'll place it at the tip of the first bone. So I'm sorry, I, I wish I understood that setting more. It's not something I, I ever have touched. Um, but it is there and I'm, I'm sure someone could find a use for it but I have yet to find it. Um, a weight is... Uh, we dealt with that in other tutorials. Let me set this back to where it's supposed to be with a slip of zero. A weight is a way with effectors and you can have a weights be different. You can paint a weight or you can have an effector. A traditional way is to just have an effector. So I'm going to create a new meta effector and then add an effector. So here is my effector. And the draw mode I want to uh, have the geometry show the draw of the effector. And so let's change the effector's size. So it's just grabbing the very tip here. And so on this bone, I'm going to change its weight to just use the meta effector, the meta effector effector. And then so then when I rotate, it only the geometry that falls within the range of the effector will move. It's kind of like weight painting with with volume with space. And so if I change the position of this effector, let's put it, make it really narrow and then change it so that it's only grabbing within here you can see that as I move this bone only the geometry that was within uh, that particular space uh, is influenced by that bone so that's the relationship between bones and effectors um, a muscle bone is something actually really really cool um, let me see what the best way to demonstrate that. Let's let's clear out everything. Uh, delete it all and add a bone. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to rotate that bone 90 
And now I'm going to create two nulls. That's what I'll do. That'll be a good way of demonstrating it. So adding a new null and add another null. So this is base and this is target null. Now I'm going to put that bone so that it is parented to the base. So where did my bone go? There is the base. I'm going to put that over here and then I'm going to put the target null at the tip of the tube and I'm going to reset this position so that it's zero. Zero down. So if I animate this null, move it around, you can see that the bone will move around as well. So anything I do there, it'll move around. Uh, and so all the geometry will do the same. So what's cool about um, bones, uh, wait, uh, Sorry, what's cool about muscle bones is that they can do some really fun squash and stretchy stuff. So I'm going to switch this bone to be a muscle bone and I'm going to tell its target to be the target null. So now what I'm going to do is animate this end null here and you can see it's squashing up. It tries to maintain a volume for the tube. Let's switch that to something more appealing, smooth. And so that's a great way to get some. And when you stretch it, it still tries to maintain the volume, and you get kind of a Elastigirl type thing. Which in in when you're actually rigging, this is a, an invaluable thing. Um, it really um, gets you some some awesome stuff happening. Uh, and so just by animating the target null, you can see its influence over this muscle bone. It gets fatter as the, the space decreases and skinnier as it goes out. And there's ways you can adjust those settings. Um, squash, it will no longer um, get fatter as if the space narrows, but it will get narrower. So it will stretch, but it'll no longer squash. Um, keep clicking that and st let's just minimize that. Okay. Uh, stretch it. All it will do now is just kind of scale to the length. So it won't do any squash or stretch. And the same uh, is said for here. So if we leave squash and stretch on, but turn the scale off, uh, and you animate the target null, um, it kind of does the same thing. So uh, what this align auto muscle length button it does, I, I kind of skipped over that. If you've set up your bone so that it's not uh, reaching the target, so if its length is, um, turn the muscle bone off, if its length is here, then you turn muscle bone on, you can see that it's, it's oddly, it's already stretched and that's something you don't really want. And so by clicking auto muscle length on, it'll automatically set its stretch so that it's properly you know it's it's predefined it's 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 go it's at the proper stretch now so that's what that does uh i think i've covered everything um these are all the settings let me see if there's anything else bone no um oh invert weights uh, I could probably should have shown that, but that will invert the influence of the weight of the effect. So, and a weight can be in, you can paint your weights or use effectors there as well. But I think I've I think I've covered everything. That's um, the bone tab, fully described and demonstrated.